In today's video, we're going to answer the question, how do I execute a system command? Or run a program in Python that's not Python itself. I need to run, run something like list or ping or something the operating system does inside of Python. Well, I'm going to start with the old school. And this is just when you want to run it now, dang it, and give me the results. I don't want a bunch of fancy uh, new stuff going on. And that's done with import OS and run the os.system command. And so here we're just running ls, which is list, uh, give me the long format. You have to pass in the full string, and then it will just put back out whatever the operating system uh, printed to the standard uh, output uh, or error. And here we go. I get a list of all the files in the directory. Simple, straightforward, easy to do. And this is pretty much the only way I had done it up until doing the research for this video. But now I have a new school way of doing it. And this gives you a lot more control over what's happening. And it was introduced in Python 3.5. They say it's the recommended way to do it. Now let's take a look at this. So it's the subprocess library. And you're going to do subprocess run. Now instead of passing in the full string, you pass in the little pieces of it. And it puts it together in a string. So already... That's a little more complicated. I mean, I still get it, but eh. And now we're doing something about standard out going to subprocess.pipe and standard error going to subprocess.pipe. And then, just so I can get the text in a format that I can use, I'm going to do text equal true. Now, let's... Oh, and I can't just do results. I have to do results standard out. But now when I run all that, I do get the same output. Now look at this monstrosity compared to this very simple thing. And so you can see why I'd never really taken the time to understand why you would go through the trouble of the second one. But, you know, so thanks for nothing. You showed me a more complicated way to do the same thing. But wait, there's more. Now, now we're going to get to the part where you can't do this with OS.System. So this got my attention here. You can run the command in the background. And where this becomes critical and where I would use this is, you know, I write complicated things like uh, processing stock data that streams in with all kinds of calculations being made in the background. Well, you can't just stop what you're doing and wait for something to finish. You've got to be handling all the other I.O. stuff that happens. So with subprocess, instead of run, we can do P open capital P. Now you still pass in like we did before and what it does is it runs in a background process. So you can get on with your life and get other things done. Now how do you find out if it's finished? You call poll and if it comes back with something other than none the background process is finished. Then you can call communicate to pull the results out and do something with it. Now, in this very simple case, I'm just going to run sleep for six seconds. And I wouldn't want to sit there and hang waiting for all six seconds. So I'm going to have a loop over here and get some other work done while I'm waiting for this thing to finish. Now, this isn't how I would use it with like async, but it's a good way to do it in this example. So here we go. Now it's going to run along, does a second of work, another second, fourth, fifth, sixth, and it finishes. So that whole time you could have been doing something else while you're waiting for the process to finish. Very interesting. No other way to do it. Okay, now one final trick. Another reason to possibly use this is, you know that old standard out and standard error? Well, instead of printing it back and giving it to me, I can send it to a text file. So right here I'm going to open a text file as F, and then when the subprocess runs, it's going to put its output into that file. So that's pretty cool, and that's something that's not as easy to do with your OS system command. So that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and hit that like button. It helps me build an audience here, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.